Hi guys, I hope you know who are the directors of a company and have already met with different types of directors from my previous video. The directors shall exercise their powers bona fide and in interest of the company. The directors while exercising their powers do not act as agent for the majority or even all the members and so the members cannot by resolution passed by a majority or even unanimously supersede the director's powers or instruct them how they shall exercise their power. Now let's move to the case law. Peter, we need to come to an settlement. See, you two are not in condition to finance the company. So you should resign from the company. So what, Percy? We two have right over the company. So? That's not how the company works. Little bro. Money is needed to run a business, dear. We can do one thing that you two will not involve in financial matters, and still hold the majority of the shareholding, but you need to resign as governing directors. You don't need to think so much, it's a good deal. I am your brother, I will manage things. Okay, I promise I will resign from the directorship, but there's a condition that independent directors should be appointed and will be given the control over the company's financial matters. Okay, deal. Sir. We need to call money from the shareholders, the company is in need of finance, and after analyzing options it is being considered that, making calls is the best option now. Okay, but I have asked my brother to not to participate in financial matters. Sir, but the company is a separate person, as a shareholder they need to pay the called up money. Can't we manage the funds? Sir, we cannot go for debt options now because interest will create more burden for the company. I will personally talk to your brothers, sir. Okay, then call the money from the shareholders. Sir, the company needs to grow now and being the major shareholders of the company when your brother needs to contribute your unpaid share capital of the company. See, my brother has already made a deal with Percy that we will not participate in financial matters and that's why we have also resigned from the directorship. Sir, but you both are the major shareholders of the company. If you are not ready, unfortunately I have to fill a suit against you. I am the majority shareholder of this company, that means I am the owner of this company. No resolution can be passed before my permission. Let me see how you can file in litigation. Just before the hearing, an extraordinary general meeting was called, whereas the majority shareholders Peter and John procured a resolution to discontinue the litigation. The company, and Percy, contended the resolution was ineffective. Following the litigation it was held that A company is an entity distinct alike from its shareholders and its directors. Some of its powers may, according to its articles, be exercised by directors, certain other powers may be reserved for the shareholders in general meeting. The powers of management are vested in the directors. They and they alone can exercise these powers. The only way in which the general body of the shareholders can control the exercise of the powers vested by the articles, and the directors, is by altering the articles, or if opportunity arises under the articles, by refusing to re-elect the directors whose action they disapprove. They cannot themselves usurp the powers which by the articles are vested in the directors any more than the directors can usurp the powers vested by the articles in the general body of shareholders. Thus the resolution is ineffective and prevented it from being used to circumvent the company's constitution. So guys, are you happy? Even the majority shareholders cannot misuse their power. However, there are some exceptional cases where the general body of shareholders is competent to act even in the matters delegated to the board. First. Directors acting malafide. The general body of shareholders can intervene where it is proved that the directors have acted for improper motive or arbitrarily. Second, 
incompetent board the general body of shareholders may exercise the powers vested in board when the board is incompetent to act for instance where all the directors are interested in the transaction or the board is unwilling to act or where there are no validly appointed directors functioning third deadlock in the board if the directors are unable or unwilling to act on account of deadlock the shareholders have the inherent power to act hope you enjoyed and learned something new from this case law thanks for your support guys see you soon